Welcome to Females and Fine Fettle, from Wiped Out to Wealth. This is where conscientious women entrepreneurs and women living like a boss come to learn about balancing their personal and professional wellness with ease. If you have the enthusiasm, motivation, and grit to make it happen, then listen up every Monday. To be sure you don't miss an episode, sign up for weekly updates at femalesandfinefettle.com. The following discussion is for educational purposes only and is not intended to diagnose or treat any disease. Please don't apply any of this information without first speaking with your doctor. Now, here are your hosts, Denise Pasquinelli and Dr. Michelle, your natural women's health advocates who blend the wisdom of ancient healing traditions and the science of functional medicine. Hello and welcome back. Today we are chatting about habits, routines and rituals and how honoring these daily patterns can actually boost creativity, enhance our focus, spark energy, and basically help us kick ass each and every day. So there's this quote by Aristotle that I found um, that says, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act, but a habit. So a habit is something that we do on autopilot, right? We don't need to hem and haw about the who, what, when, where, and why. We just do it. And a routine is a collection of habits. Now, a ritual is similar, but it's slightly different because rituals are like routines, but there tends to be more depth to it. So for example, you might have a routine of going for a walk after you eat lunch because you know it will get that blood flowing and boost your energy and creativity for the remainder of the day. But if it's a ritual, then your motivation or perspective is shifted just a bit. Maybe you go for the walk to break up your day and enjoy the smell of the air or the sound of the birds or the way the sun casts shadows on your path. It's a subtle difference, but it's there. Yes, I love that you brought this up. I think intention is a big part of ritual. And intention brings a sense of awareness and purpose to any action you take. I think when something is done with intention, it is done with presence. And with presence, we can have a more rich experience. So all the things that you just mentioned about noticing the birds and the smells in the air and the way the wind feels on your face, tapping into all of those sensations is such a gift. And it's something that we can bring to any of the actions that we take in the day. Totally, totally. It's really that that mindfulness piece. It's super powerful. So when we're, you know, sleeping into the last second, rushing out the door with our liquid breakfast, listening to podcasts on double speed and working through our breaks, having a routine doesn't really seem like an option, right? But the thing is, once you start integrating a routine, you will never go back. I promise you. There's something magical that happens. It kind of turns into a sacred self-care practice that your body, mind, and spirit needs to feel like you can have the best day ever. So starting out, it can seem pretty daunting, especially when we have so much on our plate already. So today, Denise and I are going to basically break it down into some easy and actionable steps for you. But first, Denise is going to share a bit about why routines and rituals are so deeply ingrained in our physiology. Yes. So it turns out that our big, beautiful brains still have some old school wiring from the days when we were a lot more animal. This hard wiring can be challenging at times as our brains are still wired to notice and take in the bad stuff more than the good. This is called negativity bias, and it's pretty fascinating. Essentially, it means that our early mammal brains kept us alive by noticing and remembering the things that were scary, dangerous, and threatening. The more the brain was trained to notice those things, the faster the body could respond and get into a safe situation. Escaping danger and staying alive was rewarding, so this cycle continued. This is all pretty cool for our early man, but it can be a bit of a bummer nowadays as the negativity our brain tends to pick up on is less life-threatening and more likely to bum us out and keep us down. But the upside to the animal part of our brain is that we are still quite susceptible to training it. This means if we practice doing something positive and rewarding that positive choice, we can train the brain to keep it up until it becomes an automatic response. 
So if you have pets and you have tried to train them, you may be familiar with the key components of training that animal brain. First, it's important to identify a trigger. With an animal, this could be a whistle or a sound. For you, it could be something that you already do. I'm a big fan of building new habits onto things that you already do habitually. So things like waking up in the morning or brushing your teeth, having your morning coffee, or lacing up your running shoes. It could even be a little alarm of some kind if that works for you. Something that happens consistently or something that could be consistent and that is distinct is the most important thing for your trigger. Then what's important is to come up with a preferred action or the habit that you want to make. So this could be anything that you want. What's important is that it's clear for you what you need to do so you don't have to think about it too hard. And you also want this preferred action to follow that trigger that we just talked about. Next, it's important to reward yourself for doing that preferred action. This is what's going to get it to stick in your brain as being worthwhile and important. Think of it kind of like that early man getting to stay alive. (laughs) Having a positive outcome is going to train your brain to keep it up. So true. That reward is super important. The thing is our subconscious mind doesn't work in terms of the future. So your motivation is totally going to flop if you have these future goals that you're working towards. So instead, you want to try and focus on an immediate reward. Maybe it's that your mood lifts a little or your mental focus is a little sharper or maybe you do a workout or something and reward yourself with a protein shake afterwards. Whatever it is, It needs to be directly after the action so you continue and maintain that motivation. It's kind of a silly mind trick, but it totally works. Yes, I love that you brought that up. I personally struggle a little bit with the smaller immediate rewards, but I love everything that you suggested about taking note of how your mood lifts or noticing if your mental focus is sharper. Those are great suggestions that I really want to bring into my own practice. Mm -hmm. Uh, So finally, the last part of this um, habit forming mojo is finding a way to be consistent with this whole system. So this is what is going to eventually make the habit stick. Once it's good and strong wired in your brain, you won't have to think about it and you will just automatically do it. At first, this can feel like a lot of work, but it's so worth it once it becomes ingrained. Yes, when you're trying to build that habit, like daily is absolutely best. I used to think, you know, it took 21 days to create a habit, but the reality is that it actually takes an average of 18 to 254 days to create a habit. I know, right? That's a pretty big window. And if we miss one day, we lose 5% of our habit forming ability. But if we miss two days, like two days in a row, we lose 95% of our habit-forming ability. I know, it's crazy. So when you're fixing on a new habit, you can do exactly the same thing every day or you can switch it up. So again, our subconscious likes the repetition, but our conscious mind is the one that, you know, prefers to mix it up. It doesn't really matter what you choose, just as long as you do it. As A practitioner and as an entrepreneur, I never really say this, but set your bar low. (laughs) Think of something Mm -hmm. that you could even do on your worst days, those days when your inner two-year-old is stomping her foot and screaming, no, I don't want (laughs) to. Like, for example, if you want to start, you know, a daily meditation practice, just commit to one minute every single day, just one minute, 60 seconds. And, you know, if you do it right when you wake up, set a timer. Uh, Personally, I use something called Insight Timer because it has these pretty bells and dings that you can choose from. And you can, you know, set the timer to whatever time you want. Full disclosure, I'm at two minutes a day right now because this is a practice that I'm trying to make into a habit. That's awesome. Good work, (laughs) Dr. Michelle. Thanks. I am a huge fan of Insight Timer. Also, I especially 
especially like to listen to the guided meditations that they have, which can be really helpful if meditating is a little intimidating to you. Sometimes it's nice to just listen to somebody else guide you through. And they're really helpful to me to keep me focused. And I love to ground into some of the new perspectives that I hear people share. So listening to positive ways to consider things that are happening in my life, I find to be hugely meditative. And this repetition works those ideas deep into my brain. By the way, next week we will be interviewing Sarah Blondin, who creates the Live Awake podcast and has a series of incredible guided meditations available on Insight Timer. I listen to her often and I can't wait for you all to learn more about her next week. So exciting. Um, or maybe, you know, you're wanting to work on fitting in more movement into your life. You could just start with 10 minutes a day, each and every day of stretching. And again, do it right when you wake up because as the day wears on, we end up getting decision fatigue. And before you know it, you're pushing it off till tomorrow. <laughs> That's a great suggestion. I always like to think about good old inertia or the concept that things in motion are more likely to stay in motion. Mm -hmm. And the converse, of course, is also true. Sometimes just this thought is enough to get me up and dancing around just a little bit, at least for a song or two in the morning, just enough to get me moving and keep me moving throughout the day. Love it. <laughs> so here we put together like five of the most impactful routines or rituals that you can start um, doing today that can really help with um, productivity. So first, having a consistent sleep and wake cycle, yes, even on the weekends, we are diurnal creatures, right? So our hormonal balance is largely reliant on this yin and yang dance of our melatonin and our cortisol. And as you know, melatonin is our main sleepy hormone, while cortisol is our main awake or stress hormone. And this hormonal dance actually affects other hormones in our body. So our sex hormones and our thyroid function. Um, from both a Western and Eastern perspective, the ideal bedtime is usually between 9 and 11 p.m. Um, that's when our cortisol our awake or our stress hormone is at its lowest and our melatonin our sleepy hormone is at its peak and a lot of times if we're up past 11 p.m we end up getting that second wind because uh, our cortisol kind of starts to rise again and we feel this creative burst of energy and want to get everything done on our to-do list um, if we're asleep by this time all of that energy goes into restoring and regenerating and detoxing our brain and and our body. All right. So for number two, having a consistent morning routine that allows you to limit decision making and get your day off on the right foot. So creating a little morning routine that you can just flow into first thing can make a big impact on the flow of the rest of your day. We often have established habits in the morning. I love to use that toothbrushing example because that tends to be pretty ingrained for most people. So it's a great one to hang a new habit off of. The other great thing about having a few things you habitually do each morning is that you will feel a sense of accomplishment after your morning routine is through. So starting the day off this way definitely will impact the way the rest of your day unfolds. I personally am obsessed with learning what people's morning routines are. I feel like morning is just such a sacred time and I love to get a glimpse into how people spend it. So to give a little taste of what a different morning routine might be, I thought maybe you would share yours with us, Michelle. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so mine, I wake up and um, I end up usually having a large warm glass of water uh, with little spritz of lemon in it. And then I do my meditation. I am hoping to increase that time over, you know, the next few weeks. Uh, and then I write in my five minute journal. It's a gratitude journal. And then I do a at least a 10 minute flow of yoga, um, sometimes longer, sometimes I'll do a hit workout, but that's kind of a little time frame for me to do my movement. And then 
almost every other day, actually, I do an infrared sauna for about 30 Mm. minutes. Yeah, which is, I love those days because it's almost like a a mindfulness meditation in and of itself, kind of being in there and um, yeah, just relaxing. I usually actually listen to an audio book, to be quite honest, while I'm in there. But yeah, and then I kind of, um, I shower immediately after that, of course, and then get on with my day. Awesome. Yeah, what about you? Well, for me, I usually start the day doing some deep belly breathing, even before I get out of breath, <laughs> before I get out of bed. <laughs> um, and then I do the whole teeth brushing, tongue scraping bit while I'm making some coffee. And I drink some warm water with lemon as well. And then with that coffee, I'll either do coffee or I'll do matcha tea. And it usually has lots of fat in it and some collagen and some of my favorite adaptogens. And there's something about creating that tonic that is really meditative to me. It's just I love doing it every morning. Mm. And then I will sip that while I'm doing some meditation. And usually I'll journal for just a little bit after that. And I'll then do like a dry brush, which I just but I find that really good for me. That's really wakes me up in the morning and then I'll shower and make a smoothie before I head out the door. Mm, I love dry brushing. I'm going to start integrating that again too. <laughs> yeah, That'll be a new so habit. I'm going to start. Again. I forget about how good it feels. Uh, it um, does. So sometimes I'll take breaks and then once I start it up again, I'm like, ah, why don't I do this all the time? Seriously. It really wakes you up. <laughs> totally. All right. <laughs> number three, map out your big three the night before. So something that helps me fall asleep is to really map out the top three tasks that I need to get done the next day. So I'm not obsessing about them while I'm trying to fall asleep. This also helps to boost my productivity the next day because I have, you know, really clear direction and I know exactly where I need to start. Um, It's really important to get these things done first, you know, once you've started your work day because as the day goes on, we can easily get distracted and end up with that decision fatigue I mentioned earlier. So once these three things are out of the way, you can move on to another task. Great. So number four is to have an evening routine or a ritual. So I guess I've talked about the morning and the evening routine. I I like to think about these rituals as the containers to the day. So when you take charge of these really potent times of your day, you get to set the tone for the way you want your day to begin and end. And I noticed that this simple act can call back so much of your own personal power. So if you're feeling overwhelmed or out of control or desperate for some kind of change or stuck in a loop, using intention and attention to disrupt this pattern and reset it can be super powerful. So for an evening routine, you'll know best how to wind your evening down in an intentional way. Um, For me, I love to shut everything down by about 9 p.m. So no more screens and no more phone time. I find that this really helps to slow down and relax my mind. And I almost always take some sort of magnesium to support relaxation. And then I try to bring in some kind of grounding ritual. And so I encourage you to think about what would be a really great grounding ritual for you. It might be stretching or taking a hot bath or having a cup of hot tea, maybe putting your legs up the wall and breathing. Sometimes I'll do a little bit of journaling in the evening. And I love what Dr. Michelle just mentioned about writing out the next the most important three things for your next day. That would be super grounding. I also like a little writing technique called rose thorn bud. And that's where you simply write out your rose for the day or something that you are really glad about, something that went well. You write out your thorn for the day, which is something that was challenging. And then the bud, which is something that you're looking forward to for the next day. This can be a really fun thing to write in your journal. It can also be a fun thing to share with your partner if that feels good to you. I love that idea. (laughs) Yeah, it's pretty quick and easy and it can really uh, be grounding. 
I have a very simple little freebie that is going to be available for you at the, um, with the show notes. It can help you to map out your own morning and evening routines and even give you a place to mark off when you do them, if you're motivated by that kind of a thing. There are a few suggestions on it, but definitely make it your own. So again, look for that in the show notes. Yeah. All right. And number five is having a midday ritual. So one of the quickest and easiest ways to boost productivity is to take a break. Seriously, the white space helps to clear out the brain clutter and helps you look at things with fresh eyes. An easy way to start is to create a lunchtime ritual. So this doesn't have to be anything fancy, but just time that you set aside to eat your lunch. The key is to do it without distractions. No phone, no computer, no plotting or scheming, just mindful eating. You can get to all that other stuff once your break is over. So if you have, you know, a half hour lunch break, try to split it up. 15 minutes of mindful eating and then 15 minutes of walking. Bonus points if you can walk outside and soak up some rays. So during the day, if uh, you're sitting at a computer, another way to get this sort of ritual or routine down is to get up and stretch um, or just bounce in place every hour or two. So this will really increase blood flow and circulation and will help your energy and your focus. And you only need to do it for like 30 to 60 seconds. It doesn't take any time at all. So that's what we have for you today. All right, folks, hopefully there is a tip in here that can make its way into your routine, helping to bring a bit of ease into your day. We cannot wait to meet you back here next week. In episode 40, we'll be chatting with Sarah Blondin of the Live Awake Project and creator of the Live Awake podcast. She writes and speaks beautifully about the importance of slowing down and turning inward. I think you're really going to enjoy what she has to share. Have a great rest of your week and bye for now. Thank you for listening to Females and Fine Fettle from Wiped Out to Wealthy, a podcast to fit your lifestyle. If you like what you've heard, please subscribe, rate, and review at femalesandfinefettle.com. If you have questions or topic ideas for upcoming episodes, we'd love to hear from you. Please be sure to tune in next week.